Joining me now, President Trump's deputy assistant, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, and let me just take my blood pressure medicine. That was quite an intro, thank you. <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. You've had quite a week, Dr. Gorka. You and the uh, mainstream media have kind of been going at it, yes? We had some fun. We had some fun this week. We've got a great team. We've got Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Sean Spicer, and Kellyanne. But I'm glad to support the man. It was fun this week. Well, what I liked most was when you told, who was it, CNN, that Nick at night beats them in the ratings? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're at position 13 nationally, CNN 13. Fox, of, of, of course, is number one. And Nick at night. So comedy reruns and kid shows are at number 11. 11. That's the crisis of credibility in the fake news industrial complex, Judge. Well, you know, it's got to be frustrating for you. I mean, you know, the president is a man who works 20 out of 24 hours a day. You guys, I'm sure, haven't had sleep since he got in there. Uh, it's got to be frustrating that you can't get out to the American people what actually they are doing and you are doing to help us out because of this meddling by the mainstream media. I, I see it a little bit differently, Judge, because, you know, we, we live inside the cellar corridor, so we're inside this bubble. But if you get out of the bubble, the, the mainstream, you know, the, the, the America that elected the president to be the commander in chief, they know exactly what they're doing and they couldn't care less. This Russia, Russia collusion delusion is irrelevant. People see the jobs coming back. They see the price of gas. They see the fact that this week, we destroyed the caliphate. That should be the news. Look at what CNN's doing. CNN, the rest of the mainstream media, it's Russia, Russia, Russia. They talk more about Russia than America. It's like Pravda from the Cold War. You remember Pravda? Yes. They, they, they talk more about Russia than America. And they've lost credibility. And that's why the president's Twitter feed is so important, because he just jumps right over them and he tells the American people, we are making America great again, Judge. And, and you know what's interesting is that uh, there is no fear uh, or concern on the part of this president in working with Putin. Putin. It's almost as though he can let all this cacophony, uh, this, this noise around him, he can kind of go like this and brush it off his shoulder and do business. And it seems that if we can work with Putin to fight ISIS, we're doing it. Look, the president is a patriot and a pragmatist. He looks at relations with Moscow with a steely eye. I myself, my father was arrested and tortured and imprisoned by communists. So there's no love lost for me when it comes to the Kremlin. But hang on. This is, along with America, we are the two most powerful nuclear nations in the world. We both face terrorism, and we are going to need, or we would like to have, some kind of cooperation with Russia on key issues like Syria, like ISIS. And if people think that's a bad idea, then they don't understand how the world works. And, you know, one of the things, uh, Doctor, that I didn't say in my open is that, you know, this Iran, the nuclear deal that Obama did, and $150 billion and then $400 you know, on pallets and unmarked planes. They're yelling death to America. The media didn't, it could care less. Their hatred for Donald Trump is so intense. It, it's almost frightening. Think about all these people that are obsessing on this fake news, literally lies, not one piece of evidence of anything done illegally by the Trump campaign or this administration, despite Hillary Clinton, her husband, the DNC, the Ukrainian government, totally complicit in all kinds of incredibly shady deals. But what do they want to talk about? They want to forget that the people who are criticizing us now were for the Iran deal, made the JCPOA possible, told Mitt Romney do you remember during the debate, oh, Russia, oh, really? Yeah. The oh. 1980s want their foreign policy back. These people have no integrity. But we don't care, Judge, because we are keeping to the agenda that got Donald J. Trump elected. This isn't a distraction. People think that this is what we talk about in the West Wing. We couldn't care less. We are working. We're pushing forward. And we're making America great again.
Sebastian Gorka, it's always good to have you on Justice. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks, Judge. All right. And Colonel David Hunt is still ahead tonight with a closer look at the progress the administration is doing in taking down ISIS for once and for all. But next, liberal lawyer and Hillary Clinton supporter Alan Dershowitz is on deck with a take you may find surprising on this whole Russia business with the Trump White House. And then, I invite you to join me for what was truly a spiritual experience for me, a sneak peek inside the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. I put on my hard hat for a tour of this remarkable building, and you're coming too, so stay with us. So what are we seeing here? A 150 foot long digital ceiling uh, where we'll rotate biblical art and images throughout the entire day. Breaking tonight, Republican Senator John McCain's office says the senator and former candidate for president is resting comfortably tonight after undergoing surgery to remove a blood clot from above his left eye. The operation, we're told, was a success and the senator will be back to work soon. But the big question tonight, what effect will this have on the Senate health care bill? Keep it on Fox News Channel for the latest developments. And meantime, the liberal feeding frenzy continues with nonstop attacks on the Trump administration over the Russian controversy. My next guest is a prominent Harvard law professor and liberal author who is also a Hillary Clinton supporter. And he says he doesn't see any crime at this point in Donald Trump Jr.'s behavior. Alan Dershowitz joins me now by Skype. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. I mean, you know, I'm shocked as a civil libertarian and a criminal lawyer and a liberal in how liberals are, some of them at least, prepared to stretch existing laws, talk about treason, talk about uh, other kinds of crimes that just don't exist uh, when it comes to the facts as we know them about this meeting. And so I'm going to keep insisting that uh, we stop uh, accusing people of crime when there's just no evidence of crime. Well, let me let me be a little more specific. Under the uh, uh, campaign uh, finance laws, I mean, there is a claim that if you get something of value, and they're alleging that information from of value from a, a foreign national could be, uh, you know, stretched out to mean, you know, words. Is that something that's ever been prosecuted? Of course not. And if it were to be prosecuted, the First Amendment would trump. A candidate has the right to get information from whatever source the information comes. It's very much like the New York Times publishing the Pentagon Papers case or the Washington Post publishing material stolen by Snowden and Manning. Uh, you don't prosecute the newspaper. They have a First Amendment right. And you don't prosecute the candidate or the candidate's son. They have a First Amendment right to get the material. If the material was obtained unlawfully, you prosecute if you can the people who obtain the material. But there is a First Amendment right of a candidate to use information. And so you can't include information under the campaign finance law. That would be unconstitutional. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. But I mean, you know, there's some smart people out there are alleging it. But at this point, I don't I don't believe any of it. But let's talk about treason. How can they even use the word treason? I mean, you've got Nancy Pelosi and the rest of them. Nancy Pelosi, I believe, has said after these latest revelations, it's clear we've suffered a desecration of our democracy and collusion has been proven. By the way, what is collusion? Collusion is not a crime right. unless it's commit a criminal act. But the treason thing really upsets me because it so flies in the face of history. When we wrote our constitution, the British were using treason very broadly against their kings. And so the framers of our constitution wrote the most specific provision of treason ever put into a constitution. Treason shall consist only of basically waging war against the United States, uh, right. coming armed against the United States. It is inconceivable that anybody who has any knowledge of the Constitution or of American history would argue that a private citizen, by securing information for a campaign from somebody who may be a surrogate of the government, has committed treason. It's just so ahistorical and so contrary to what the law is that we ought to stop talking about it because we're miseducating American people, we're miseducating young people. People come over to me and say, uh, is it really treason? And I tell them, go back and read the Constitution. Look, the good thing is young people really are looking at the Constitution these days. A kid came over to me recently and asked me about the emoluments clause. Ah. She had thought of 
documents were kind of facial cream, and now we talk about a monument. So, <laughs> and now we're talking about uh, treason. So we're going to learn a lesson. And but I think it's so dangerous to democracy to throw criminal law terms and to just accuse people willy nilly. It was just as bad when they did it, in my view, to Hillary Clinton when they yelled "lock her up, lock her up," and mm -hmm. try to expand. The espionage laws to cover her conduct. I'm mm -hmm. an equal opportunity critic of both sides of the aisle and, when they try to criminalize political differences. And because, and, I'm to and because we need to go, I want to. I want to tell everyone there is no doubt that you are an equal opportunity critic. And tell us the name of your upcoming book that you're writing. Well, it's called Trumped Up, and it's about the politicization, the criminalization of politics and how dangerous it is to democracy. It will not only be about Trump, though, it will be about Congressman DeLay, about, uh, right. uh, you Came know, various Bailey, other all of them. Arch, and, right. and Stanley, and Stanley, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Silver. guy who was a Silver yesterday, okay. the second circuit ruled in a thank way you. that makes it clear that this can't be a crime. All the right, second Professor second. Alan Dershowitz, we've got to go. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. All right. And Colonel David Hunt is still ahead. But next, the resistance and its Russia obsession. Amy Holmes and Chris Hom standing by to debate as well as some of the real issues of making news out of Washington this week. I'm here at the Museum of the Bible, about to go in, and if you can't tell from what I'm wearing, we're at the hard hat stage. But going forward, this place is going to open in November. You're not going to believe what you're about to see.